Hi, I'm Dana Stangle. I'm an urban wildlife specialist and I'm the executive director of Taranga Ranch. We do local native wildlife education in Los Angeles. Today we're going to talk about coyotes. Coyotes in the backyard, my neighbors telling me stories of their little dog being taken by a coyote. Suddenly I'm seeing them in the street, I'm seeing them in the neighborhood. It's confusing. Well, there's a lot to know about the coyote. He's a super interesting animal. Coyotes have been around people for many, many years, and they are still going to be around people for many, many years. They're very interested in the trash and the food that we leave behind and the rodents that are attracted to that. Today's coyote is more successful on the urban landscape than he is in the wild. Our job now is to figure out how do we peacefully coexist with these guys? Are they coming right for us? All right, so now we're gonna talk about the backyard a little bit. A lot of people ask me, how can I keep my backyard coyote proof or wildlife proof? How can I keep all the wildlife out of my backyard? One way that people use is the coyote roller fence. This is an example of it. And basically, people will put it around the perimeter of their fence and the animal trying to get over the fence cannot gain purchase and so it'll slip down. It's very well made, it's very smooth. I've seen um, homemade versions of this that are not quite as smooth but may do the same job. Other things you can do in your backyard to make it less palatable for wildlife. There's a wide variety of deterrents that can be used in the backyard for different animals. This one is called the scarecrow and there are a variety of models of this available. It's motion sensing, it's a sprinkler with the water. And even animals that love water like raccoons do not love being sprayed right in the face with it. So this is a great backyard deterrent because what we're doing is we're breaking habits. Again, this animal has been coming into the yard for one reason or the other. Now when he comes into the yard, he's being sprayed with water. That's training. And it's not fun anymore. Now we've got the noise and light deterrent. And what happens with this is it's also motion sensing. This one is called the critter getter. What I like about it is it's mobile. You can attach it to your fence. You can attach it to your house. You can put this anywhere. Uh, where you know the animal is coming in and out of the yard. So basically what this thing is, is a strobe light and a very loud noise. And so an area that the animal is used to being able to quietly sneak into, he is no longer able to quietly sneak into, and it's no longer fun. How else can we train the problem coyote in our neighborhood? What we can do is employ humane hazing devices and maneuvers. Usually, if it's a canine like a coyote, he's curious, especially if we have another canine next to us. So he's going to be interested. He's going to look, he's going to listen. He may stop for a minute. He may look really bold. And in that moment, we have a training opportunity for that canine. Are we gonna stand there and let him continue to stare at us and get closer and get closer because he's curious? Or are we gonna keep him wild? Because that's the best thing for him and that's the best thing for us. And so if we see him around our home or around our area regularly, we can keep something near the door that we can, when we see him in the street, we can open up our door and we can be like, hey, one of my favorites is the old bike horn, right? Having a bike horn is a great wildlife deterrent. Wildlife doesn't like that. Wildlife isn't expecting that, and that is a great way to get that coyote to turn around and make the decision to run away. And now you've trained him. People with their pets are scary, and I shouldn't approach them if I'm a coyote. Also, at the dollar store, you can find an air horn. This is a great way to deter a coyote from your area, and cheap. Coyotes hate bells. 
The old standard penny can. You can recycle your cans, fill them with pennies or bolts or stones or anything that makes noise. Give it a shake. The coyote's not expecting that either. So, one thing that's really important with humane hazing is that you have buy-in, right? Like, you can't just be like, get away, coyote, get away, coyote. You have to be serious. You have to be the boss in this situation, right? And the person who can be the boss in this situation doesn't even need a humane hazing device, right? If I see a coyote and he's looking at me funny, I wanna be like, yeah! That's all I need to do. I just need my body. But if I, maybe I'm a more timid person and I don't think that I have that in me, having my little helper is helpful, right? So then I can use my body language and I can use the humane hazing device at the same time. That's really scary to even another human. But what happens when I'm not in my backyard anymore? What happens when I'm out walking the dog? What can I do? What steps can I take to make sure that my walk is a little safer? The very first thing is to be an active dog walker. Don't be walking your dog while you're catching up with your phone calls for the day, while you're doing other stuff, right? You need to be involved. You should, this is your family member. You should be looking at him. You should be engaging with him. You should be having some time with him. If you're over here and your leash is out here, you don't know if an animal has just taken your dog off the end of the leash. You have no idea. So. Pay attention when you're walking your dog. The other thing is, I really don't recommend retractable leashes. They're cute, I get it, they're handy, the leash just reels right up in there, it's the best thing since sliced bread. One of the problems is that the leash gets very, very long and you can lose sight of your animal. Another part of the problem is it's got a mechanism in there and if that mechanism fails in the moment that you're trying to get your animal closer to you, you're gonna have a problem. This is an example of a sturdy leash that has a poop bag, because you shouldn't be walking without your poop bag. It's not too long for me to be unaware of where my dog is. Sturdy, not a retractable leash. This is a perfect example of a leash that's good for walking a medium-sized dog. Also, don't walk without a humane hazing device on your person not even just for coyotes. You're very likely to encounter a dog that's off leash. What I like to do is carry something with me that will produce an effect that is unexpected to the wildlife or the dog that I might encounter. Of course, I have to condition my own dog to it in advance so that I'm not scaring my dog also while we're on the walk. A couple of examples of personal humane hazing devices that have worked for me in the past are Little air horn. This can go around your neck so your hands free. You blow in it and it's very loud. <coughs> that will scare wildlife away. And finally, one of my favorite humane hazing devices is a handy umbrella. It's great for hiking. It might rain. You could be ready. It's definitely going to be sunny. You could be ready for that. But if you encounter wildlife, you can use an umbrella. That's my favorite. Coyotes are an emotional topic for many people. Either people have lost an animal or they know someone who has lost an animal. Our pets are like our family members. So it can be really hard. And people have a lot of very strong feelings about coyotes in their midst. The reality is we have control over protecting our animals. We can do it. The power is in our hands. And we also have the power to learn more about these incredible animals so that we can understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. Also, 
pay attention to social media. Social media can be a very interesting and very scary thing. Not everything you read on social media is true, or maybe it's not real, or maybe it's just one point of view. Make sure you question the sources where you receive information and try super hard not to feed into negativity that can be caused on social media sites. Because in the end, it doesn't benefit people and it doesn't benefit coyotes.